Home designers, this week we're tackling a very common problem, storage space. There's plenty of it, but it gets messy quickly, and it's important because it's in the master bedroom, so what do we do? And what's a gal to do when her husband has a massive hat collection? Transforming a living space into a dream home can be a daunting task, but it doesn't have to be difficult. For years, I've helped homeowners with simple, easy to achieve solutions. All it takes is seeing design challenges as an opportunity for creativity and innovation. Welcome to In The Room. Today we're designing for Amy in Portland, Oregon. And here she's run into a problem. It's a problem that many people have, um, namely the problem of storage. Hi, my name is Amy Garrison and I live in Portland, Oregon. I love working on DIY home projects, working with my plants, and problem solve and troubleshoot spaces in our home. Our master is the last one that we need to tackle. The closet is the number one problem. It's very small, it's very disorganized. So my husband has a lot of different helmets and hats. That's one issue for him. And then I would love to incorporate a feature wall. I love mid-century, cozy, and boho feel and I just love to kind of settle on a plan and get to it. The master is the next room that they're going to tackle and the closet is the number one problem. Everything fits inside Amy's closet but she needs to remove things in order to access other things and this gets to be a drag. One of the biggest problems with this closet is that the doors leading into it are sliding doors that pass one another and you can't pull them all over to one side. You can only have half of the closet open at any one time. And obviously this is part of the issue because if access is a problem, only being able to access half of the closet is only compounding your problem. So that's one problem that we're gonna fix. The feature wall that I'm gonna propose needs to do double duty. It not only needs to draw attention away from what we don't want it to see and draw our attention to what we like, it needs to section off certain portions of the room to be used in a completely different way. It's almost like the functional feature wall is what I'm gonna propose. Amy's husband has a hat collection. So how do we solve a problem like a hat collection? To me, a collection says something about pride, like you're proud to have collected all these hats. It shouldn't be stored in a box in a closet. It should be proudly displayed. And that's gonna be one of our solutions as well. Since the number one problem in this room is the closet, that's where I'm gonna focus this solution. And my first recommendation is going to be to get rid of all of those doors. Because there's two layers of doors for the closet and they slide past one another, you can only have half of the closet open at any one time. And since we're already dealing with a hyper-packed closet, that only expounds the problem of access into what you're trying to find. By removing all of the doors, obviously it's gonna be a much easier closet to use, but you're gonna be faced with the unsightly view of all of your storage without any kind of screening in front of it. What if we turn the bed around in the space and put the headboard against the visibility of the now doorless closet? With the bed in the middle of the room, you still have circulation access to the bathroom, as well as circulation access to the French doors. Now, of course, it's a little bit weird to put a bed in the middle of the room, but hear me out because there's gonna be more to it. Currently, there's two dressers on either side of the space in front of the closet. I'm gonna recommend that we remove one of them, and now we've got an additional bit of access to the area behind the bed. Now, why do we need this area behind the bed? I think that by taking off the doors to the closet, and putting the screen of a headboard a little bit past the closet, we've created a new area right here that turns this whole space into a walk-in closet. Yes, I'm using air quotes. Yes, it's not a real walk-in closet, but hear me out. If we were to increase the size and scale of the headboard so that it was a real screen, a feature wall, which is another thing that Amy's asked for, now we would hide that area of the room completely and open it up to a kind of open floor plan closet type space. And I noticed that Amy has a beautiful mirror over the bed. What if we were to take that mirror, pop it into that new walk-in closet area and turn it into a proper dressing space? Let's see what that could look like. And here it is. This is the new plan for Amy's bedroom. Whereas before the bed was centered in the room and centered on the TV, which was inside the centered closet, 
This time I've shifted the bed down a little bit towards the French doors so that this space right here is a little bit more generous. This way, the entrance into the bathroom is even less impeded and we have this additional entrance into what I'm calling the walk-in closet. Because Amy's closet was the number one problem in this bedroom, I'm giving primacy to the solution of the closet. And the solution is we're turning this entire space behind the bed into one large closet space. Now, because I've gotten rid of one dresser, we obviously need to address the lost storage. And the way we're gonna do that is by improving the inside of the closet. Currently, Amy has what looks like an Ikea-style lack shelving system turned onto its side. By turning that storage unit vertical, you can use the structure of the two side walls of it to hang new hanging rods. What this does for us is it increases how much storage goes on the rods. We've got two for short storage right here and one for longer garments. And it gives us these two spaces on either side where I would propose building in shelves. These shelves on either side will now be easily accessed. And of course you still have that one long shelf over the top, which we're not gonna move. And one secondary shelf over here on the side. Then the next step, bring in those beautiful bohemian details that you already have. Now I've seen two different photographs of this room where this beautiful little layout that she had in the corner, I would much more recommend um, having this kind of sur a work surface next to a light source. And we've got this beautiful French door here with light streaming in. So this is where I would put this beautiful, cute little situation that she already has in her room. What I'm also bringing in is a bench. The bench I'm proposing is from Kathy Quo Home. It's called the Upholstered Wood Metal Bench. And what I like about it is there's a little bit of upholstery, but it's off to the side, so you can use the exposed area of the bench for perhaps a little bit of storage. You can put boxes underneath this bench because the support for it is so slimline that there's actually lots of space underneath it. We've brought in that mirror that you had over the bed to the other side, and this is our new quote-unquote walk-in closet space. No doors means full access to everything inside that closet. But of course now we're faced with a disadvantage of looking at this ugly open storage space. But we're not gonna look at it. If you remember, we're gonna put the bed in the middle of the room and turn it around with the headboard hiding some of that. Already better. Now, this is not the final solution. The final solution is going to incorporate the one additional detail that Amy asked for, which is a feature wall. Here's what it's gonna look like. A custom made headboard. I'm sure you've got some carpenter friends. Maybe one of them has a computer numerically controlled milling machine, a CNC mill. If so, that's the friend to ask this of. If not, there's plenty of people locally, I'm sure in Portland that can do this for you. When you have this headboard created for yourself, you're gonna center that headboard in the middle of the room and then you're gonna push the bed off center from the headboard. We're doing this for a very good reason. The centered screen is going to screen out all of that clutter and mess back there. So your walk-in closet is gonna be screened away. And yes, it doesn't go all the way up to the ceiling, nor does it touch the two side walls, but that doesn't matter. It's gonna be such an object in the middle of the room already that it'll draw attention to it in exactly the right way and screen away everything behind it. Once we put the screen of the headboard there, this is what it looks like. And you'll also notice here how the centering of the two objects works. The screen is centered in the room, but the bed and its nightstands are not. They're pushed closer to this French door wall, thereby allowing us some access into our walk-in closet. And finally, here's the final look. What I love about this is that it shrinks the scale of the room and creates an entirely new room behind it. The front room is the bedroom. Then on the other side of it, we've got a little bit of a cluttered mess, which you already had. You admitted this to me already, Amy, and I'm letting you embrace it. I'm saying a new closet design is gonna help with that clutter, but even if it doesn't, the screen is just gonna take it all away. So that leaves us with one last space that we haven't considered, and that's the wall that the bed is now facing. Here is my design for that wall. If you're really proud of hats enough to start a collection about them, then I think you should put them up on the wall and show them off. And the way we do that is by using hooks. For the hooks, by the way, I found a very cool set on Anthropology's website. They're called the Cody Knobs. Obviously, I've also put a TV in the middle of the room. I think you should upgrade your TV to one size larger, but don't go massive. 
a nice civilized scale of TV centered on the bed, which is no longer centered in the room, and then hooks all around that TV, which is where the hat collection will go. For the nightstands, I went with a slightly narrower nightstand because you're gonna need to maximize the circulation space to the right of the bed. So I found this cute little nightstand called the Hudson nightstand on room and board. And what I like about it is it's got open storage and a drawer and it takes up just enough space. It's all the space that you need for a nightstand. So this is my design for you, Amy. I hope you like it. Center the bed in the room, push it towards one wall, have yourself a brand new headboard made, large and in charge, almost to the ceiling, but not quite that way. It lets light in from the sides and the top and craft for yourself a brand new space behind the bed. That's your new walk-in closet and remove those closet doors. They're getting in the way. And now you've got uh, a space that really works for you. If you've got a home makeover project you need help with or a room you'd like to reimagine, drop us a DM at shelter on Instagram and tell us your story. And don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube so you don't miss a new episode.